for security reasons, you're advised to not to accept packages or bags from strangers. Hello, you intelligent beings of the other web. Here is a story. This video was filmed a year ago. At the time, I was just denied a United Kingdom visitor visa. One of the high points of the visit to the UK would have been Bletchley Park and the Center for Computing History. Instead, I thought to go someplace else where I'm allowed to. With that, in June 2019, I passed the border control of Domodedovo Airport, answering why I'm leaving the country, and with a large suitcase filled with classical music requested to be brought to my relatives, I passed the border control of Berlin Tegel Airport, answering no questions, as there were no questions asked. Schengen area is sure a nice thing. Berlin has a great Deutsches Technik Museum, which was the first destination before venturing further. Oh hey, a museum that would accept me. One of the most remarkable items exhibited was hanging just over the entrance. Cessna 172, Delta Echo Charlie Juliet Bravo. On this Cessna, Matthias Rus landed near the Red Square on May 28, 1987. Shipping. Can't walk past some safety equipment. Curiously, a Nikmei crypting machine was featured in shipping section. An example of first and first class cabins of a transatlantic liner with Havanagila playing in the background. From shipping to aviation. That wouldn't have worked. Even in technology museum can't walk past some paintings. Small section of women in aviation construction. Pigeon photography. Nazi times weren't ignored. When a car wants to look like a plane and ends up looking like a boot. A creative solution to museum space problems. Douglas C-47 Skytrain. One of the raising bombers used in deblocated West Berlin. This display is unfortunately a bit incorrect. Air Berlin is permanently closed. Not sure if it's a good idea to superpose Ryzen and Versenken. Computing wasn't covered much, but there was a section on Conrad Zeus. Zeus computers were among the first in the world, beginning with mechanical Z1. Z3 was the first digital electromechanical computer. It seems that the reconstruction is now ongoing. These computers continued in post-war West Germany. Some of the equipment isn't labeled Zeus, as it's just external peripherally connecting to the computer itself. The television section was quite appropriately occupied by a television crew. Curiously, the word televisor was shortened in English, but was learned and still is used in multiple languages – French, Polish, Ukrainian, Russian. Too many numbers. Too few numbers. Sad story, actually. Telefunken brand is now sold to People's Republic of China. Railways. The railway section occupies a shed and a roundhouse with a turntable. That was one of the first engines to roam German rails. Double-decker cars aren't a new thing. This locomotive was cut, labeled in German, and serves as a full-scale demonstration model. Affordable cars. Didn't know before that Sir Clive Sinclair's C5 was certified for German roads. Networking. Quite a fancy tower with a DVD player there. To demonstrate Laserdisc, a German copy of The Life of Brian was used. On Lou from Google. Most of the tech is hidden behind glass. But there were a few computers set up. Oil PC with an original hand crank charger. Quite hyped back then. Captain Crunch whistles, a symbol of US telephone hacking. Neighboring a Wi-Fi antenna made out of a can. The visit to the museum took an entire day, and the museum was left by the closing time. But it wasn't the whole journey, as there was another museum to visit deeper in Germany. 
big night and good hugs everyone. Remember to subscribe here on YouTube and on Patreon and remember to check if the pin is center negative or center positive and check if the voltage is correct.